talk about uh, the creation of business value with, uh, with cooperation with universities. I believe this, this is not a question about yes or no. I see the smiles, so there's no question about it. But, uh, but the always hard question is how? We have heard uh, several cases from big uh, oversight till actual cases of um, positive and negative emotions towards the cooperation. And uh, maybe we can uh, a bit more add uh, Christian's opinions there and then, uh, then we'll again engage the audience and, uh, and, and uh, see if we can uh, solve some problems uh, within, uh, within that context or provide, uh, provide some solutions. We, are ni we have quite a nice uh, spectrum of, of players here, so I hope we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have uh, lots of opinions. So please, Christian, with you. Hello, my name is Christian Lepik and I come from the Estonian Development Fund. Um, I've been responsible for the smart specialization process in Estonia and uh, this is pretty much an innovation strategy. So, so uh, one thing that came out from our reports as well was that uh, technology transfer is, uh, is a very important challenge uh, in terms of innovation and that should be no surprise to anybody because it, that's, that's the same way everywhere. So yesterday I thought quite a lot how to kind of do a sh short intro to this uh, to this presentation uh, or this uh, this panel, and uh, I thought that maybe we should take a step back and think about what do we mean by knowledge transfer. And I I just made some couple of pictures about it, and it's pretty much a pipe that goes from universities to or academia to uh, the business side, and um, and this is a very simplistic view, but it should be a pipe through what the knowledge kind of flows. And this is how usually kind of politicians also see it. And when they say that, yeah, the knowledge transfer is not working, please fix it. So if you take that kind of simplistic view, it's very hard to solve it. So if you take into more detailed view, uh, knowledge transfer is about kind of generic challenges and also uh, technology specific challenges. So it's very, knowledge tra transfer in biotechnology is very different from the one in ICT, for example or materials technology. So you have to first solve the kind of issues that are generalistic, maybe about mo motivation, how to get uh, people from academia to, uh, to business. And uh, then you have sector specific uh, kind of uh, challenges or bottlenecks. But let's take a mo one step further and the next slide won't be too pretty, but the reality usually isn't. So again, if you look at the knowledge transfer, the pipe is very I would say has different challenges. So as you can see, uh, the lowest one, uh, I could be probably be a better uh, kind of drawer, but, but uh, it's, it is what it is. But the lowest one here, you see that the kind of business side is big, but the kind of pipe to the academia is difficult. And you can see that in some cases, the kind of pipe doesn't go to the businesses at all. So you have to take this into account. Every country is different. Every kind of uh, challenge is different in that sense. So you, I think the most important part is to understand the pipe. So what kind of challenges you need to fix in what kind of uh, also business maturity level as well. And um, this is one chart where I show that I think that this kind of uh, brings out the challenge that we have. Uh, universities tend to think technological in the technological areas and those are horizontal going through the economy. Businessmen usually think in terms of value chain how do they move higher on the value chain? And if they move constantly, one horizontally, other one vertically, nothing happens. They go different ways. So the challenge is to create that pipe that kind of ha is, uh, is twisting or has curve. So how to kind of turn the horizontal knowledge into vertical business areas. So that's the challenge. And I think that um, it's, it's the pipe isn't uh, kind of as simple as the first slide showed, and this, the pipe is very complicated. But I think what is important is capital is the one who is leveraging it and who can make things happen. And since we will have more venture capital coming to Estonia, I think it's very important to build a knowledge transfer uh, uh, area because this is the way how the knowledge can get to the businesses. If you don't do that, the capital won't invest here. And the last slide. This is probably the how the kind of pipe looks like. It's very complicated. It's not two-dimensional. It's three-dimensional. 
and to make it work, you have very different layers of challenges, and IP is just one of them. So that's all from me, and uh, let's go to the panel now. So for the, uh, for the panel, uh, do you want to add or, or compliment uh, Christians, or do we uh, step into the uh, details already? Or don't you? Okay, I, I could comment. Yes, that's a really tough uh, question, and we, you, we can take it from the industry point of view, uh, or company point of view, or then uh, as a broader chain, uh, broader, broader manner. If we take as uh, our company point of view, I think the mo very often the first thing that the, when the university has a great idea and wants to commercialize it, uh, the almost uh, every time they have forgotten to make the financial calculations. So they don't they they overestimate their uh, product, which ma is uh, technically and scientifically very nice but it has uh, maybe no commercial value in a way that it's, uh, it's one-time solution. And uh, we as a technology provider want to have this kind of multiple type of solutions. The other hand, uh, the other comment I would like to make is that I, I, I presented this EIT raw materials. And one of their actions is uh, those kind of uh, upscaling projects which means that uh, those projects have been on the low technology readiness levels and developed uh, together with the uh, university or, or industry or cooperation. So they, uh, there has a possibility to go to a higher technology re readiness level in those cases and really making those feasibility studies first and then to develop and try to find a home base after that. Um. Yeah, maybe to add some comments to, I think, to a very interesting observation here. Um, first of all, a, a little story, which is um, at Frost & Sullivan, we, we deal with obviously a large range of companies globally. And um, we were at one stage, as, as, as we deal with many companies, dealing with two divisions of, of Philips. One was the healthcare team and the other was the energy and lighting you know, uh, uh, team. And uh, we were talking to their division on, I can't remember which way w w round it was, but the, the, I think the energy team, lighting team, they're based in uh, Palo Alto. And they said to us, could you put us in contact with the people that you're dealing with in the healthcare team to actually understand what they're doing? So I think that little example um, is, is a bit of a context to um, even large corporates don't actually know sometimes what they're doing. Contrary to impression, um, they're, they're big enough and complex enough that, you know, one division doesn't quite know what the other division is doing. Um, and, you know, that's a common problem. So first of all, don't assume that corporates actually know exactly what they're doing. To look at the question from the other way around, we're recently engaged in a conversation with a uh, globally recognized um, research institute uh, based here in Europe. And one of the things that we're talking to them about is actually helping them um, basically retrain their senior client-facing staff in terms of developing stronger uh, skill sets in strategic business development capability. And one of the issues is, that, and this is for an organization that quite frankly has a phenomenal track record, and hundreds of millions of, of, of euros a year in this, in this line of work. Um, so they, it's not as though they don't know what they're doing, but what they do realize is that they're missing a trick in, in speaking the language of, of industry, in speaking the language of the end clients. And actually and understanding, but perhaps even more interestingly, anticipating the problems and challenges that these clients will have. So I think, um, you know, referring to the, to the complexity, I think you're absolutely right. And, and, and half the trick is actually just making sure that you're speaking the right language, uh, that means you're actually understanding the needs of, of industry, but also to some extent what's driving industry development, which is what I touched on this morning, and, and to bring real context. Uh, and particularly in context, of course, that usually would denote that understanding of the industry, understanding the trends, of the challenges, and so on, which is clearly, I think, what's been touched on uh, in previous presentations. So I think those are two sides of the coin, um, and it's really about the secret of the glue is how do you get the same language? Um, and how do you really bring those two things together strongly? I also I want to give a short uh, comment. I mean, I think in general in Estonia, the like the prevalent discourse is always like 
knowledge transfer from academia to industry, but you should always, you know, take account the other way around. Kind of, uh, you know, industry who's very close to the market, and you know, they translate uh, market signals. So you know, it's always like two way. Yeah, that was my actually my sh short comment. I would I would support uh, this uh, uh, direction. Uh, yeah, and. Uh, because uh, you show only one direction from uh, university to industry. But uh, if the knowledge is created only in university, independently of industry, how it's possible to be profitable? If the uh, item of, of research is not connected to, from signal to industry, then you make some very fine uh, invention and to commercialize you have to build a factory to launch production and uh, to fight this uh, marketplace. It takes 10 years, a lot of money and uh, 10 years uh, delay, it means your invention is old fashioned. And better way is uh, start with a market or uh, product developing uh, from uh, industry to have some signal to the university. It's something like a framework program of EU. It's not possible to start make uh, just science. You have to have a uh, Ericsson production developing or, or Philips or, or who leading this consortium and after five million uh, project Philips or Siemens took this five million and makes it 500 million. No, and it takes maybe development production takes half a year and uh, Ericsson or Siemens are already on the market. They have factories, they have production. That uh, it's very simply and money conserving if you, if you make 95% uh, of science uh, on the direction from industry to, uh, to science and 5% from direction from science to industry because it's uh, like a lotto uh, you you give result or not give or not if you start with the science if you start with the industry problems to uh, production development projects to solve then you are very commercial approach I surely didn't think that this is, uh, happens, or I, I think nobody here does think that uh, the knowledge just pops out of universities and yeah, into yeah. business and something happens. It's an ongoing process and for example, when we visited uh, in Israel last year, the technology transfer offices, uh, they, they also they worked very closely, all, also the technology transfer people with uh, both the academia and business and all the time monitor whether the IP you're generating is a kind of, uh, is, it, uh, is there a client? So, so, so it's an ongoing process yeah. all the time, and the closer the kind of parties are, the better this kind of curved pipe works. Yeah, and uh, I guess uh, not sci scientific uh, people, but uh, almost parliament uh, may say, five percent of uh, science money goes without uh, issue taken from industry. It's it's a uh, like science space research, I mean. Yeah, it like space space research. Like our hundred percent of uh, Estonian science money is uh, from science to this direction. We have to decide, make uh, ninety five percent opposite direction, and left only five percent for this lot of science, basic science, which is not. Uh. I think it's uh, maybe also a problem of bigger mentality because, uh, I mean, in Estonian universities, I see that uh, it's uh, so like uh, pro-standardization, especially, I mean, uh, 
I don't know, even like master studies, that you go, you go somewhere, you have just like this selection of uh, subjects and you take them, and then maybe you write the thesis and then you're kind of like final product. But uh, I have a friend who just went to do masters um, in design in Stockholm and the approach there is very different. Like first uh, three months you spend actually to investigate some problem or issue in society and then you defend that this uh, issue is, um, you know, that it's need to be solved. And after that you actually put together your study plan your uh, cooperation with companies or other universities. So the approach is very, very much different. So it's not like, you know, very hierarchical, like from top down, you need to study this, 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 then you get paper, but it's more about, you know, your creativity and problem solving. So I think, you know, it's in academia, it's sometimes like, like a bigger problem. Yeah, Ma maybe one comment from the what's happening in Finland is that in Finland uh, there are these uh, Funded programs coming from Tekes uh, mainly, uh, they have in a way shifted so that the, the industry is giving these kind of uh, challenges and wants to have it, f try to find in a cooperation with uh, with a universal in industrial challenges, let let's say in metals production, and, and then start the programs from those and then. Uh, the universities and research institutes are taking in part and try to find out to make uh, to solve those programs scientifically and, and making these kind of issues. Of course, we have this basic research that's uh, coming from academia side and which is financed and uh, strictly out of uh, reality. So, but <laughs> some some connections to reality, and they they might get uh, in 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 long long t long run. 10 to 15 years, it might then, then they, those two parts meet each other. But what, what you, you guess, what is the percentage of, uh, of this basic to application like science? Are there I, any? I, I don't. 10 percent? No, 110 percent? No, no, I, I, <laughs> no, no, it's uh, le, le, roughly speaking, I would say they, they are quite equal. Basic and uh, application. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe some other, I suppose, interesting context here. One is, um, if you think an order of magnitude, roughly speaking, whether you describe it as the famous valley of death or, or describe it in any other way, roughly 80 to 90 percent of all research funded will not be commercialized. So uh, just put this in context, European Commission's funding 80 billion, roughly speaking, on Horizon 2020. So the reality is, roughly speaking, about 70 odd billion will be not quite wasted, but it won't see full commercial return. So that's just one macro observation. Another one, I think, to do with culture and association. Um, I'll give an example. In the UK, 40, 50 years ago, we had a very strong tradition of having the, in effect, universities, blue chip universities, established as centers of academic excellence. And then we had, in effect, um, technical universities or polytechnics. And then about 20 odd years ago, we, we, we kind of started mm, changing the nature of all of this to actually move everything to be termed a university. And um, this was completely opposite to the direction that Germany, as an example, has had, where, where there's a very strong focus and understanding of the distinction between having a fantastic academic university cohort, but also a technically able um, higher institute uh, model as well. And that's paid huge dividends in terms of enabling not just um, commercialization-based activity, but also at a, at a broader cultural level, acceptance that actually you don't have to be an academic uh, or go to an academic institute to be seen to be successful in terms of what you actually have an impact on, on technology development and society. And so, so, so I think, uh, um, and, and that filters down into the, the kind of micro level, day-to-day -day world that an academic-based environment lives within. I mean, from my experience of working with academic, academic institutes, and by the way, we get a huge amount of interest from tech transfer functions across the world to use our research to obviously help them substantiate opportunities in commercialization. Um, but, but, you know, they often tell me that the problem that they have when they are working with their colleagues who are the academics, it's like a, a, an English phrase, which is herding of cats. You know, it's very hard to get them galvanized around being interested on, on commercial opportunity. So there's, a, there's an issue here in terms of culture. And I think it's, 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 it's a really big issue 
Um, so it, it, it's not just about the money you throw at the problem, but it's about actually what is the genuine expectation and how do you change the understanding that to be the top academic, you don't just rely on uh, a metric, which is how many papers do I publish in the top scientific publications? Or that we understand that that, is, that has its place and we have a greater emphasis on technology, practically orientated institutes that are the drivers of commercialization. So that's just, I think, some interesting, maybe hopefully, inputs into, into the thinking. I think that's an excellent point here. And, and, uh, and in terms of uh, when we, when we talk, talk about academia, uh, sometimes when they say that there should be more applied research, there should be more to uh, move towards businesses, uh, that's um, sometimes, I would say, uh, an empty slogan again, if you don't specify where and how. For example, I think that some group of people, I don't know whether it's half or, or more or less, uh, about a scientist should be only dealing with base research. And, and there is another group who is willing to do and go to the applied research. And not everybody does not, ha not have to do everything. So you, so you have to say that, and also in businesses, there are some businessmen who can cooperate with academia. And although it's not very big in Estonia, it's growing. And there are some businessmen who will never do that. And you have to understand that what we plan to do also, or what is important, is to bring these kind of people who are willing to do in academia the kind of applied research and the business people, part of only business people, who can do that, uh, kind of apply that. So you have to bring those together and not just have this kind of empty, empty slogan of let's do it. In relation to that, Ian, you, you already started uh, to bring out the, so to say, the, uh, the best mechanisms. So you, you spread out the, uh, or, or explained the, the mechanisms of, uh, of the collaboration. And we heard that, uh, for example, even professorships are supported uh, by the industry. So would you please, every one of you, bring out, uh, in addition, what is the, the, so to say, in your field, the, the golden, uh, golden set of uh, of, uh, of what you need from the university, basically. So we heard professorships, targeted uh, uh, tech, tech offers, uh, availability, uh, and so on. So what is, what is the need in your, uh, not, not in your company, but in, in your field, in that sense? What, what do you need? Do you need, uh, as I was bringing out yesterday, do you need the kindergarten children to be able to understand your business? Maybe in some cases you do. I already uh, said, uh, if you look the problem only between uh, uh, enterprise uh, factory and university, you, uh, your, your attitude is like all is okay with the uh, Estonian Theatres Agentur Science Foundation or Enterprise of Estonia. Uh, I first, what I would uh, change the regulation or rules of this science foundation and uh, enterprise of Estonia to make more feasible. And, and then the result is better cooperation of, of industry and university. In, in nowadays, regulation is almost impossible. No, but uh, from the university <laughs> side in that sense, when you no, go to university. If you don't change uh, general uh, regulations, it's not almost possible to, to have a good relation between. If, if, I, if, I, if I say it from the minerals and uh, metals point of view, what we need, the whole industry needs, is uh, talents. We need competencies, we need people who are... The problem with this kind of major technologies that we were on the bottom corner it on your... On your Diagram. So it's we really need that this is this is still interesting uh, industry. It's a high tech industry. Uh, it's not a dirty industry. It's clean industry. It's sustainable industry. And but it needs people to study this and to people to make research and ed educate there, and to be the uh, f in in future then uh, working for this industry as well. Um, I mean, I can't speak on behalf of all the industries that we cover and so on, but I mean, maybe just as an observation. I certainly think there's been, um, it's interesting actually to watch the progress of funding programs at national and European level over the past decade or half decade, where there's been clearly a bigger push towards uh, what I would describe as impact assessment. You know, what kind of direct impact are you going to have 
on the economy? What kind of direct impact are you going to have on jobs? I remember talking to somebody some years ago in the Irish Science Foundation telling me that they're actually, uh, sorry, the university put in an application to the Irish Science Foundation and described them to me that actually 50% of the marks on their application was based around employment impacts, which really, you know, threw me back a little bit. Well, I mean, this is the basic research, you know, program. I think they've got it slightly, uh, maybe the wrong way around. I think um, one suggestion, which is a challenging one, is to, not just for researchers, but for SMEs in particular, is actually maybe to take a step back and, and reflect on whether they really want to pursue funding through public programs rather than actually funding through private sources. Because I think what you end up doing is building up a, or maintaining a kind of a model, which is in effect a, a mini industry of, of, you know, creating the right answers in the right way, having the right consortia for the right reason, developing a, a proposition that may be just about okay for the market, maybe not, but without really being forced to really test things much earlier on from a market-led perspective. So I think one of the things to do is maybe revisit the culture of tackling public funding for maybe sometimes the wrong reasons and maybe being more proactive about tackling you know, private funding and ultimately being market driven. I mean, the example that I've seen here today is a classic example of, quite frankly, being on the money in terms of a megatrend, health and wellness, being on the money in terms of a big shift in demand at a consumer level to more authentic natural products, and also being on the money in terms of everything else that goes with design, understanding the value add, understanding a whole range of things. It's been a phenomenal uh, example to listen to today. So this is the kind of thing I think that we need to be you know, kind of paying attention to. Yes, there was a connection to research, but it, it felt very clearly to me that that wasn't, you know, the kind of uh, total context. There was much more to it, much more market-centric. Great example. So. From uh, our company or sector, what we need is, uh, I, don't th I think it's quite simple, like uh, willingness and uh, openness, non-conformity, and uh, basically it uh, comes down to people. So very simple things, actually. And I think when you have these things, you can make a uh, lot of really cool stuff. So what I think is important is um, sometimes people want uh, to tell to the academia also that you need to start more businesses. And y maybe the kind of scientists must be business as men as well, but I think that uh, their brain must functions between those m academia and business are so different that you don't need to do this. You need to build, bring together the scientist and businessman and create a platform for them to succeed. And capital is the one who will kind of offer funds for that even if, if you have just the idea. And I think that's important and that's what's needed from universities and Eric Pura from Tartu University later on will, will tell also the Tartu example. And I think that's a very good direction because uh, the kind of technology transfer unit is already pushing things. But I think also from the government side, the uh, funding towards that must be much bigger to make it happen. So, so or, to, or to kind of leverage it more. So I think that's what's needed, the kind of platform for, uh, for, uh, for scientists and uh, businessmen to work together. But Christian, back to that, uh, the engagement of private money, as Ian pointed out, uh, is that not an option to that your mind? I think that's very important. And um, again, I think there is a good structure coming from Estonia, which is uh, called for, uh, Fund of Funds, and it will be venture capital funds, and government will invest half of the money, and the private sector will the other half, and private sector will be the dis decision maker. So that's a very good setup because oh, private sector takes the risk as well, but government helps it. So, and this money will come to the si kind of uh, knowledge intensive project because it's uh, venture capital and it looks for something new. So we will have money available for that and that's private money. And you get it only if you partner the kind of uh, scientist and businessman together well. So there needs to be set up for that. So I think, and this is why also we, with Development fun Fund, plan to do knowledge transfer report about st Estonia to map exactly what is wrong in the pipe and to offer then kind of solutions. I think And Andres mentioned it well that uh, um, it cannot come only from academia. The kind of government also must put the setup that will help that. Yeah, this, uh, this help is uh, uh, Science Foundation have to work uh, with uh, uh, professional uh, association, example, electronics industries and association 
we settle out the academic problems for our product development uh, factories and uh, science make his science work but not independently of, of this industry but he have a, a input from industry make his science uh, part of work and then industry took his part of production but uh, just uh, independently making science is output is also independent Eric, Eric Pura, University of Tartu, Vice Rector. I, I, I think it's quite symptomatic that there are two entrepreneurs uh, in the panel who have actually been very close, uh, who are very close to the university. Professor Takla is a professor in Tallinn Technical University, and Mert Millian has been working in my technology transfer office. So uh, the question is where all the other entrepreneurs are and what they are thinking. And if you think this way, that there are 65,000 companies in Estonia and there are like maybe six universities, uh, then you can uh, may, maybe, maybe less soon. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so then you can understand actually that if you really think that uh, the university can go and knock on every door, then, uh, then you sh we should make a list and we can, we can have the, the some, some companies uh, after 250 uh, years to be uh, like made, made the first knock. But, but I, I think that we are, we are uh, and Christian also looking on this process uh, of um, uh, what is the theme of increasing the value of companies together with universities. Uh, very uh, in the frames of technology transfer only, not education. And, and my, my, my point is that uh, most of Estonian companies has absolutely no understanding what uh, IP-based business models actually are. So, uh, so I think this is like, uh, like, like my point, that if I am uh, hearing the news uh, from Estonian media, uh, how intellectual property uh, is, uh, is uh, actually uh, approached uh, by many Estonian companies. I, I would really like to cry because this situation needs a uh, considerable change and we should look at uh, universities uh, also as educators in, in, in this topic. So, so this is, I think, even, even more valuable than uh, as, uh, directly to think that uh, uh, and also, if, if we have uh, maybe uh, 300, uh, uh, 300 uh, uh, applied research groups in Estonia, and every research group has uh, uh, connections and contracts with seven companies, it's 2,000 companies again, and it is, uh, it is 3 percent of Estonian companies, and even they don't have capabilities for more. So you have to think a little bit more widely to put the company first, really, as it was said already, and then to look also what academia can do. Thank you. Any reflections? No. <laughs> Reflections is, is uh, the guilty are not universities or enterprises, but those uh, state uh, foundations, Science Foundation and <laughs> Enterprise of Estonia. They have to make regulation. Uh, those that uh, industry and uh, universities start to work together. I, in our regulation, it's almost impossible to my mind because for scient scientists, <laughs> there are only uh, articles, citation, uh, doctorants, and so on, and that's it. You have to change something. But it, it's not forbidden to do that, to, yeah, uh, to yeah. engage uh, each other in, in that kind of relations. But uh, So what I picked up from Eric's uh, uh, opinion is that uh, maybe the company should uh, think uh, a, bit, a bit in front and, and uh, give their insights into education planning as well, as I understood. So we saw the professorship example here uh, and, uh, and we continue with that. But, um, and probably uh, companies are listened when the curricula are developed, as I understand. So they, you have connections with companies who say stuff about their workforce, which, which, is, which workforce is needed. 
And the other topic uh, that uh, I could uh, expand is that it doesn't have to be an Estonian company that interacts with an Estonian university and vice versa. So the world is global. So uh, a bit those numbers were in, in that sense not right, but uh, you, you have the base of companies as an university to approach to and vice versa. You have the companies to do collaboration with. Uh, yeah. I can give personal example. Uh, when I was the board member at Creative, uh, this agency, Newton, I mean, we approached the um, Art Academy uh, regarding uh, joint uh, curricula uh, development or, and uh, it was like total hardship. It was not like, you know, anybody waited our uh, opinion. It was kind of like, you are, oh my God, you are like market predators. You just take our kids. It was like, you know, and I mean, the, if, you, if you are confronted with these type of values, then you're like, okay, whatever, we, we make our own academia there or something, you know. So, I mean, it's a nice idea sometimes that you cho uh, work jointly, but uh, I think some mindsets need to be changed first. Uh, um, absolutely echoing this. It's, it's really, it's listening to everything here. It's, it's about culture. You know, I think that's really important to understand how important that is. That's what frames a lot of what we all do. Um, and also, I totally agree, it's not about technology transfer, it's about knowledge transfer. You know, and how you define that obviously is much wider. And it's not even just about skill sets. I think it's a lot more than that. Um, some of the good examples that I do see around in terms of uh, in the UK, uh, Innovate UK or Technology Strategy Board funds technology or knowledge transfer networks. Simply means of companies and academia coming together. No formalized agenda. They sort it out themselves. If things happen, they happen. If they don't, they don't. But it's a way of changing the culture of operations. So I think you're absolutely right there. Uh, that's really critical. And internationalization, absolutely. Um, give you an example, Fraunhofer uh, Research Institute in Germany, uh, 10 years ago we started working with them. Uh, what have they done since? They've gone and, and commercialized and oper operate now in places like Oman, Dubai, China, and so on. So the world of research you know, activity is absolutely internationalizing as well. So I totally agree. Yeah, and once, once again, the, the Finnish model has been years many deca deca decades already though, so that the universities and companies are working together and they inform in various uh, ways how, to, how the things go on. But there still is this academic freedom. So there are still uh, uh, basic uh, researchers who are doing basic research and that's good. And because they need this kind of uh, mass of uh, knowledge to carry out this kind of basic research. Yeah, but uh, for our regulation, academic freedom is for 100% of items of, of research. You said that you, in Finland there are 50-50, yeah? Yeah. It would be very good for Estonian research if, if, if what academic freedom is not 100% uh, items, research items, but 50%. It's not 100%. But you have an uh, item for research from Science Foundation. You have only uh, these quality parameters of science. Yes. Articles, so on, so on, but no. But we can definitely continue with the discussions, uh, and we have a lot of mind food for now, but, uh, and great ideas in that sense, that this is what, what this is all about. We need, you need to talk, you need to, I'm not taking the trademark on that, but uh, you need to change the culture.